Good morning, Matt here. <clears throat> Saturday morning. Just about to go on a toad hunt with my son. Yes, sir. And uh, thought I'd do a video here. Uh, we're in Hebrews one. I'm just I'm just so enjoying Hebrews uh, this time around. God is really doing a work in my heart, and I hope in yours as well. Uh, so yesterday we we got through about the seventh verse. Uh, we, we saw that if you wanted to see the radiance of God, you look to the sun. If you want to see the exact image of God, you look to the sun. We saw that Jesus sat down when he was done, and, and everything is, is uh, happening by the power of his word. And uh, we left off at about the seventh verse. And the seventh verse, it said, Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. Um, we'll see more references to angels here because, again, the temptation in early Judaism was was uh, to elevate angels a little higher than they should be. We we saw that in first we see that in First John, uh, the Gnostics wanted to worship angels, and and that was a, a common temptation of the time, and uh, <clears throat> so we see here. In Hebrews 1, Jesus clearly being elevated to, the, to God. His name is above all names. And we're going to see that today in this next passage, uh, 8 through, through 13. And this is one of the most powerful passages that I've ever read, and I love it. And I did a video on it the other day, but now I'm kind of reading through, so I'm going I'm to restate all this. Uh, we'll start in verse 8. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. We need to be careful when we read this. This is really awesome. But of the Son, he says, this is God speaking to the Son. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Okay? This is God calling Jesus God and proclaiming that his throne is forever and ever. That's amazing. If you're a Christian, that's amazing. That should get you excited. God calling Jesus God. But, but of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you. Again, God calls Jesus God. Therefore, God, he's saying, Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Okay? Some, some translations call this the oil of joy. Uh, and what it, what, it, what it's saying here is God is, is clearly declaring Jesus as God. You know, we have this mystery of the Trinity, but one thing we know is, is Jesus is God, and Jesus made the world, and the world is under his subjection. We're going to see that in the next chapter. Um, and it's just a little side note, if you ever want to teach somebody or show somebody or meditate on yourself the fact that Jesus is God, the deity of Jesus Christ being Lord, King, God. Go to Hebrews 1, go to Colossians 1, go to John 1. Um, in fact, we might even go to John 1 today. Uh, anyways, back to this God calling Jesus God, and he has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. What does that mean, the oil of gladness beyond your companions? Um, well, one of the videos that my son and I really love watching is King Saul and King David, and, and they were anointed with oil. And what, what this oil of gladness means is, is that there was a special anointing on, on the prophets that, that went before Jesus, uh, David, uh, Moses, Samuel, uh, you name it. And uh, what this is saying is you too, because Jesus is a prophet too, but he's also a priest, and he's also the king. He's everything, right? So it's saying that, that God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. So Jesus isn't just a prophet, although he fills that role. That, that's a title you could put on him. But his, his, the, the anointing that he had, this anointing, with the, the oil of gladness is beyond your companions. Again, the whole point is Jesus is more than everybody else. Jesus is higher than the angels. Jesus is higher than the prophets. Jesus is, well, 
he's so high that he's God. <laughs> he's, he, Jesus is God. And we see that clearly here. Uh, next verse. This is powerful. And this is what God's speaking. And you, Lord, again, God calls Jesus Lord. I just, that, I just, that, I find that to be amazing. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. Okay, so there's a temptation maybe for newer Christians or for non-Christians to think this Jesus just came about in the New Testament if, if he was real at all. But no, this clearly says that Jesus laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. God chose Jesus, God the Father chose Jesus to lay the foundations of the world. And that is utterly exciting, but it gets better. He, did, he didn't just lay the foundations of the world. He actually, if you go to Ephesians 1.3, God just showed me this the other day. If you, uh, Ephesians 1.4, I think. Check this out. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he has chose us in him. He has chosen us. We are chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. That's Ephesians 1.4. So not only did Jesus lay the foundation of the world, but before he laid the foundation of the world, he knew you if you're in Christ. He chose you if you're in Christ. That's amazing, you guys. We need to meditate on that for a minute. Okay, so before he laid the foundation of the world, he, he knew my name way back when. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's saying. Oh, and it gets better. Ephesians two set, uh, Ephesians two ten rather says that you are the work uh, the workmanship of Christ. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which He prepared in advance for you to walk in them. So what what this all means is Jesus created the world. He laid the very foundation of the world, and before that, He knew you. And he also knew the very works that he would have for you to do. That is a, a mighty God. That is an amazing God. He's that big. Do you know this Jesus? Because this Jesus is much bigger than a lot of you think. This Jesus is much bigger than at times I think. We need to get a proper perspective of who our King Jesus is. I think we all can grow in this. I know I can. Um, so, you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. That's amazing. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. We're going to stop there. I'm going to pick this up on the next video because this is, this is powerful stuff. Peace, guys.